One of the really interesting parts of Stan Lee's comic books was always that Peter Parker and Harry Osborn both liked Mary Jane Watson, and that Gwen and Mary Jane were both rivals for Peter's love. I really wanted to bring that dynamic to the screen. Mary Jane and Harry come together when they both need each other. That further complicates hers and Peter's relationship and his relationship with Harry as well. Gwen Stacy is part of a love triangle with Mary Jane and Peter Parker and Eddie Brock, actually. There's like a love octagon. The interconnectivity of all these characters is something I always love. There's some really great fresh stuff in the love triangle. There's so many twists and turns. Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson are closer than they've ever been before. She's aware that he's Spider-Man, and now she is trying to live up to the promise that she made at the end of the second film to share the responsibilities of what it means to be this hero. Mommy, you love me. I love you. I love you so much. I always have. Time has stood still for the young lovers. It's right before, it's like the moment before things are gonna start to get stirred up. As Peter Parker is starting to become a little bit full of himself as Spider-Man, he's starting to build up a little bit of an emotional wall between uh, Peter Parker and MJ. Peter's not there as much for her as she'd like him to be, and so she's kind of pushed aside a little bit. Peter absolutely takes the love of his life for granted because he just believes it's the love of my life. She's my girl, period. Neither of them is bad or wrong. They're just struggling with things everybody struggles with. They're both right, but they're not in sync. I'm worried about you. I'm fine. I'm, I don't need your help. Everybody needs help sometimes, Peter. Even Spider-Man. We wanted to expand Peter's social standings. And when you look back at the comics, Gwen Stacy, one of his first girlfriends, we thought, wouldn't it be fun to bring Gwen in and have her be a little bit of competition for MJ? She's kind of like this bright, sunny, um, happy, uncomplicated girl. Spider-Man saves her life and she becomes kind of enamored. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. It'll be an interesting flirtation because Gwen Stacy is such a, a deeply moral character and she really would know, if she had known that he was involved with, with Mary Jane, she would have never let him on. Thank God you're okay. Daddy! Hey. Eddie has imagined an entire life around a date or a couple dates they had. And as he gets more desperate, as more things taken away from him in the movie, he becomes more obsessive about her. And she becomes kind of the answer to him. What about that amazing, amazing night that we had? <laughs> we had coffee, Eddie. Eddie has aspirations to be a photographer, and Gwen has aspirations to be a model. Seems like a match made in heaven, but not quite, <laughs> because he's a psychopath. In the keys to the city scene, the everyone in the crowds, you know, yelling, you know, kiss her, kiss her, kiss her. And what Spider-Man ends up doing is, is sharing that special kiss from the first film, the upside down kiss, with this other woman, and it's pretty heartbreaking for Mary Jane. And yet Peter thinks he's ready to ask MJ to marry him. And he wants to pop the question, if you will. So he goes to a fancy restaurant and he wants to do the whole thing with the ring and champagne, so he enlists me, a idiot Mater D, to help him. I have this ring. Ah. Uh, Hello. And of course it all goes to hell in a handcart. Things took a turn for the worse when Gwen Stacy showed up. It's more threatening, I think, to Mary Jane that she actually is a smart, beautiful woman instead of playing a very shallow person. Gwen Stacy is upper middle class, loving family, opportunities, totally different than Mary Jane. Mary Jane had a complex upbringing and has a complex existence. So it complicates things in a nice way. MJ's gets to a very low and lonely place. And Harry is the one that's kind of there for her as a friend. He's always loved her and whatever, he's always had a thing for her. Yeah, I hate for little things. I love them. 
Yeah, me too. The amnesia was a way to take the friendship back to where it started. And even in the first one, you only get a real, a, a little taste of what that friendship is. Check this out. That kitchen scene is, is really about like the celebration of friends and how they really feel about each other. It's just that all these other things have convoluted their relationships. We created uh, a bunch of you know poetry and uh, you know a couple of screenplays that he had been working on in high school. And that was sort of fun because it saw a side of him that we had never seen before. I'd love to be in your play. Cheers. <laughs> that relationship is a little entangling and a situation that Mary Jane hadn't planned on. Mary Jane, please. Peter believes that Mary Jane has betrayed him with Harry, and he takes Gwen Stacy to the place where Mary Jane is working and uses Gwen to make Mary Jane jealous. The camera pulls back revealing you, Tanya. Peter has used his powers in different ways. Sam thought it would be fun this time to have Peter use these powers for a show-stopping dance number. Spin. Go. I lucked out with Tobey Maguire. He is a natural dancing machine. He'll never say that. He won't admit to it, but he is an amazing mover. And the love triangle it was, for me, the driving force of this piece. Toby immediately, when I met with him, committed himself to doing this scene. So he put in some time with rehearsals and was very hands-on in helping to develop the scene as well and what really felt right for him and his character. The dance number was one of the best times of my entire life. It was so great. And I felt like I was like in some great 1940s musical. Peter is here with Gwen, but this whole thing is to really get to Mary Jane. And so in the creation of this choreography, I really kept that at the, at the front of my mind. I realized that this whole production that he's put on was just to hurt me. And he hurts her in the process, too. She isn't a manipulative woman. I mean, when she finds out that he's betrayed Mary Jane, I mean, she is truly apologetic and embarrassed by the situation. I'm so sorry. We try to approach it from the most realistic way we can and applying logic and truth to relationship problems between Peter and Harry and Peter and MJ and MJ and Harry and all of the characters and all of the conflicts mixed in with all of these out of this world things and, and I think it's a challenge and it's a lot of fun. Classically in the way we've done these movies, there are always complex romantic entanglements still the most important thing in their lives is friendship and trust and then love will come. Our story is about characters that get to know each other better, learn to trust each other. Our experiences together mirror some of those experiences of the characters growing together in the film. And really the, the, the joy of having the same actors from movie to movie is you do get to follow the growth of the characters as you follow the growth of the actors. They're now adults. They have life, they have pain, they have success, they have aspiration. We grow up with them. You have the sort of blueprint for the movie you're going to make, and you have the scenes and the conflicts and the dialogue, but then when you get with the other actors and the director and you start to play the scenes, you know, the real relationship starts to form. It's really been a pleasure to see Kirsten and Toby and James in the bonds that they've formed with each other. They were all really spectacular actors to start with, and I must say, I think each one of them has just gotten better and better.